you know, you're, you're always dressed in black. You, you know, you're up all night writing, and uh, you're like a raven or something. <laughs> Against the wind is how I travel The mysteries that will unravel When you go alone Never knowing what's gonna be You just know that you're free And you're on your own The road is long and it is winding The ties were tight and they were binding Now I'm gone And it's reminding me the road is long You just answer to yourself And never question anyone else Don't have the right Face the rain, strip through the storms Seeking shelter to stay warm For another night The road is long and it is winding The ties were tight and they were binding Now I'm gone it's reminding me the road is long. Down the road I travel. I had gone to Los Angeles and Las Vegas when I was 17 years old to see my father. And uh, that didn't work out too well. I, that was the last time I ever saw him. And uh, then I went to Las Vegas from L.A. And I saw Waylon Jennings playing at the Golden Nugget where I worked at. When I heard him sing, I said, I want, I want to write songs for a guy like that. I could, I could write songs like that. Then I came back here and uh, saved enough money to go to Nashville. For that's, that's where it was all happening. And Johnny Cash had his um, TV show, and I said, that's where I want to go, to the Johnny Cash show, the Grand Old Opry, Nashville, Tennessee. And within one day, I met Johnny Cash. Down the road I travel, bum and drip. I told him I'm a songwriter. Uh, I would always give him lyrics. Every week I'd wait for him. You know, and he, he never knew my name. He always used to call me Buddy, but we'd seen each other. Every week he'd always wave me over, and we'd talk a little bit, bit about songwriting. And um, one week I, I came out, waited for him, and he's standing here, and this other songwriter's here. And I said, I got some songs for you, John. He goes, uh, he, he takes it from my hand. He says, you know, I am writing pretty much most of my own songs these days. Uh, maybe uh, this, uh, this songwriter can help you. He's, he's just starting out. And he hands it to him right in front of me, and the guy just looked, glares at me like, like that. He was, I could see he was a little bit high. Puts it in his pocket. And I think nothing of it, really. Uh, just, uh, you know, I never, I never copyrighted things. I didn't know. I was 19 years old. I didn't, I didn't know, what I, you know about copyrights and publishing. I just trusted everybody. So a few months later, taping was over. I came back to South Beach. It was the uh, summer of uh, 1970. Four months later, I hear a song on the radio sung by Waylon. And I, I said, you know, those lyrics, you know. I'm, I'm sitting on a ping pong table with, near Alton Road by the park after a baseball game. And I uh, hear these lyrics. And I go home uh, to my mom's house. And uh, I call the radio station and ask whose name's on the, on the record. And uh, it was uh, not my name, it was the guy Johnny Cash gave the song to. I was um, pretty, uh, pretty upset for a couple of years until um, 1972, I ran into these fighters from Fifth Street Gym. They invited me to run. Down the road I travel. For somebody to run for 38 years without missing a day, eight miles. It's, it's, it's really unbelievable. You can't, you can't describe it, you know. To have to face eight miles a day out here, <laughs> running every day, never going on vacation, because he's done it all right here on this beach for 38 years. That's, that's pretty amazing. And, uh, you come out here in five years, you don't run in five years, come out here, he'll tell you your birthday, where you're born, how many runs you got, how many swims you got, you don't forget. Uh, it's a marathon. It's a, half, it's a half marathon on a Sunday morning, and uh, you know I, I don't believe in paying to run. That's that's one of my pet peeves. I don't know if you knew that. Run for free. Run with me. Don't pay to run, unless it's for charity. He had a lot of anger when he first started running, and this is a tool he used to 
to get rid of that anger and to, you know, become invent. We got a mutual friend that ended up introduced us. We worked together ever since, pretty much just through the mail. And I've done a little over 90 songs for him. Music is a big part of his life. Against the wind is how I travel. What I found so special about Miami Beach is that there's so much diversity, so many people, so many characters with amazing stories. And Raven's just one example of that. But his was one that I couldn't get enough of and I couldn't stop shooting. And Raven's kind of that way. Like, you interview him and, you know, you get so much footage, but there's still so much more. You just answer to yourself. Never question anyone else. Don't have the right. If you're having a bad day, if you're stressed out, you come out here. By the time you're done doing the eight miles, it's like you know you start off with a uh, fresh slate. Uh, all the good stories he has, all the positive energy, all the positive runners that come out and run with you. You know everybody uh, supports what you're doing. Not only is it the run good for you physically. It's also good for you mentally. The tradition was the first guy had a nickname, the second guy had uh, had a nickname, but the third guy had a like, nickname since he was a kid, so it'd be kind of, kind of a tradition that everybody would want a nickname. Uh, my name is Mary Beth Kate, and the nickname is Yellow Rose. My nickname's a butcher, and I got it because I used to work at the butcher. My nickname is Chapter 11. I work for five airlines, two boat yards, a restaurant, and they're all Chapter 11. For me, coming out and running with this group of people, it, it made Miami Beach feel like home to me. I didn't know anyone when I moved here, and once I started running with this group, it was something that I could come out and get to know people of all ages, all backgrounds. She kept me in shape, and probably saved my life. <laughs> Family has a history of heart attacks. Nobody made it 60 years old. Here I am coming up on the 77 in February. And I think I owe it a lot to, to doing a lot of running out here on the beach. Now it's kind of like I'm addicted to it. Even though I'm at 90, today will be my 96th run, I still feel like coming after I reach 100. You know, it's like there's never, since I started running, there's never been a thought in my head like I don't want to continue to come running every day. It's like I look forward to it. It's reminding me the road is long. <laughs> Great song, Raven. Thank you. Thank you. They did a story about me on um, in the paper, you know, the Herald. It has the first story that, you know, after seven years of running that they did. And, and I remember some old lady came up to me on the street and she said, she read the story and she knew me. She said, um, man, they must be really desperate for stories if they do a story on you. <laughs> and I said, oh, I kind of, <laughs> it really put me right back down to zero. Because, uh, you know, I had been running seven years and they, they didn't think it was a story and I ran with a concussion. And uh, so still, I just kept running. And there was another story a few years later in the Herald. They were looking for oddities of the beach and I was one. It was funny that the mayor was on the cover he had just gotten elected, and I was on the inside feature, and they got him to come out and run with me. And slowly but surely, uh, it was more and more stories from different magazines, uh, magazines from other countries. They would just hear about me and, and come. And I, I still didn't have too many runners, but like one tells another, and by every time uh, I'd uh, hit a milestone, someone knew about it, some TV station would come over. But in 1997, somebody sent Runner's World an idea about me, and uh, they they did a story, and that, that brought people from all over the country. And uh, ESPN Online contacted me. So they came in 08, filmed me a little bit, and, and then when I hit the 100,000, they, you know, they filmed me the whole run. We had a police escort. We had the biggest run I ever had with 280 runners or so. A lot of them I never saw before or again, and some came back, some became regulars, and 
the list just kind of grew and grew. Like it became a monster, this whole thing, you know, all the, you know, 1,712 runners now. The road is long and it is winding, the tires were tight. He's not afraid to get his hands bloody. Out of the slaughterhouse, it's reminding 90 me runs in a row consecutive. Oh, uh, butcher. Out of the road I travel, bum and drip. Feet like mercury, moving swift. Hitching the highways, needing a lift. The road is I noticed pretty quickly that the anger left and the peacefulness came. At first, uh, I heard the lyrics. I said, it sure sounds like my song. And I was obviously elated. But I, I call the radio station and they tell me whose name's on it. And all of a sudden, you go from like the top to the bottom. Like, like, wait, you know what? You know, like, wait a second, you sure? And uh, I even confronted the guy's band. I saw the guy in concert saw his band and uh, they said oh he wrote that song years ago so uh, I had to let it go and I thought about it took about 20 years to realize and I think he, he didn't do it intentionally just put it in his pocket woke up and found the lyrics he thought he wrote the song himself and he didn't do it intentionally to me and that kind of gave me a kind of a, of, a, of a relief I left my anger out there on the beach you know on the sand Many, many days, I'd walk out there and say to myself, this could be my last day. A lot of times, you know. And uh, every time I got out there, as soon as I hit the sand, I started moving. As much pain as I was in, I somehow made it. People say, what are you training for? I said, come back tomorrow. The road is long. I was 19 in Nashville, down on Music Row. I met John and Waylon at the Grand Old Opry Show. I washed dishes in the morning, hung out at Tootsie's at night. Tried my hand at some singing and learned how to write. Songs of givers and takers, liars and fakers. Those who fit in and those who don't belong Cotton pickers to road scholars and the man who stole my song 